So I just picked up this Hewlett Packard. It's a 38G and uh, you can see here when I open it up, it's got this like integrated slide cover. It's kind of nifty. Not too many calculators do something different with the slide cover. So um, that one's kind of different and you know, it kept it together since uh, I think it says 1995 maybe. So, um, I guess it did its job, and you turn it on here, you can see one of the fun things about this is you can actually put your name in there on the home screen. <clears throat> so I got my name in there, that's pretty fun. Um, and you can do a little demo mode. That shows off some of the features of the uh, the calculator. Um, I think this is like a, a cut down version of the 48G, and it's aimed at like the the high school market, I guess, or it was. Um, so one of the things about this is it's algebraic entry, and a lot of the HP calculators used RPN, which is reverse Polish notation, and because it's, I guess, derived from an RPN calculator, it has the enter and equals button up here above the number pad rather than, I think a lot of people are probably used to it being down here in the bottom corner. And so it's a little bit weird to use that. Um, and other than that, there's a couple other, like there's not too many functions on the, uh, the face. So, um, we can quickly get out of the, well, actually there's a little animation here. So again, I think it's marketed into that kind of learning math student market. Um, but I got a couple of programs that I've made for it and we can go in and take a look at those. So, um, we have the, uh, the prime numbers program so we can take a look at how it compares in speed of running that program uh, at the end but we have this here we can run this so yeah it has an uh, an addressable speaker so you can actually make a little music with it I guess oh you can uh, you can bring out the uh, the infrared printer here and we can take a look at the, uh, bring this down to the bottom here. And You can see it actually printed something there. It looks like it got a bad. Probably didn't have it lined up so well. <clears throat> it has like some sort of a, an artifact there. But yeah, we can do some printing on the infrared printer. And yeah, we can bring up the, uh, the programming in a second. But if, uh, I'll just show you this. So put some numbers in here. We have the delete key here, which is the backspace key when we're on the home menu, All right? So we can delete our our entry there like that. We can also use the, uh, the function mode to, to do a clear. And if we need to put a space in, we can shift space here like that. But in programming, if we go in and edit, um, now we have an option to use one of the soft keys for the space. And we also have backspace here on this soft key. And then the delete key actually switches over. So if we look at this, the backspace, we use this now. And then delete uh, doesn't work. And now we have to delete... Um, works like a delete key. Um, 
which is uh, kind of a weird change in interface between the two environments. Um, but yeah, we can see here there's actually quite a bit in this menu. It's pretty sluggish as well, but there's no actual program button. So to do the program entry, you can actually just type everything in, but that's super slow. Um, you hit the math button to bring up the math menu, and then you do this. You hit commands, and now you have all the um, the programming key keywords. So we can find, uh, I think it's in here maybe. There we go. So we had a freeze. And then... One of the other things in this um, programming environment is you end statements with a colon, which was kind of different because I've just been using the HP Prime a lot, and you end lines with a semicolon in that. So that was a little bit different. And we can take a look at the program here. It's basically the same. Um, it uses the, uh, the store function like you would on like the TIs rather than an equals function uh, to set variable values. Uh, it has a timestamp, like there's a, a clock with time and date, but I haven't figured out how to manipulate that. So I'll just um, record it on video and then use that to, to come up with the times that it ran the program in. Um, here's the for loop syntax, which is the uh, the same as the Casio um, 9750G. So it's kind of interesting where you use the uh, the letter equals and then the first step value or the, uh, the first value of the loop. And then you also have to declare a step on this one. So even down here, you can see I've declared step one. It doesn't just default to one. You actually had to say it. At least that's what it seemed like when I tried to not do that. So, but then everything else is pretty, pretty standard. And then, yeah, so we can run that in a second and see how it, uh, how it stacks up. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much the 38G. It's, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting. It is a little bit sluggish. Given that I came out, I think, in 1995. And there's two other tests I forgot to run on the first pass of recording. So uh, the first one we can do here is uh, the problem presented by Matt Parker in the book Humble Pie, which is 75 divided by 14. And then we subtract 5 from that. And then we multiply that remainder by 14. You're going to see we're just shy of 5 for that precision test. And clear that out. And then the other one is from Calcverse. We can look at uh, 0 to the power of 0. And this particular uh, calculator gives us a result of 1. And someone in the comments for that video um, said... I should be testing 0 divided by 0, and they had a whole big reason. Um, so it seemed like they knew more about math than I do, so we'll test that as well here. And we can see <clears throat> 0 divided by 0 gives us an undefined result, whereas 0 to the power of 0 gave us a result of 1. So, yeah, interesting stuff. Yeah, I guess we'll just run that, uh, that program and see how it compares. Um, I guess we can look at the... The current leaderboard. I forgot to do that the last couple of times. But yeah, up here, so we have the prime all the way at the top. I don't think we're getting anywhere close to that. Uh, I suspect we're going to end up somewhere in here. It would be kind of fun. I think this sharp came out in, in 2000 from what I read. So it would be kind of fun if it beat that. But I'm at least hoping it beats these two. Because uh, I don't want to spend all day waiting for these things to, <laughs> waiting for the program to complete again. Um, but yeah, we'll take a quick break to go run the, the program and then see how long it takes. 
So yeah, here we go. We have the uh, the 38G back here, and I just ran the program uh, like three times, and there was about a like a six second difference between the the runs. So I just averaged it out, and uh, what we came up with here is uh, eight minutes and 57 seconds for the 38G. So um, didn't manage to, to go faster than the Sharp, but did go quicker than the Voya, uh, Voyagers, which is no big upset this time. So here we are towards the bottom, but not too surprising because, uh, like I said, I think this is a stripped down version of the 48. So I would have guessed it would have been quite a bit slower than that. But yeah, that's the uh, the 38. I guess it's kind of weird I never do any graphing with the graphing calculators. Um, maybe I should learn some of that at some point. But the, uh, yeah, thank you for uh, for watching.